G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Time to take a look at the new Runcam Swift from Runcam. Now this is a 600 TV line Sony Superhead 2 camera with wide dynamic range. It's an SD camera, it's not a recording camera. It's the camera that you hook up to your video transmitter to get the live video feed down to your glasses or your LCD or whatever you're using to fly your FPV model with. And this is an interesting uh, option from Runcam. Traditionally, or to date, most of us will have used one of these, which is the HS1177, and this is the surveil zone version of this camera. It's people are using this because it's nicely protected inside this plastic case, and they work really well. You know, they, they have a voltage range up to, they'll run off a, anything from a two cell to a four cell pack, so you don't need to worry about BECs and voltage regulators and things. They just, they just really, and all, I think there's, some of these go up to six cells. I'm not sure if this is, um, what does this one say? Does it have the, yeah, this is only a, up to 15 volt one. This is an early one. So it only goes up to 15 volts, which is a four cells. In fact, four cells is over 16 volts. So, hmm, I don't know. Maybe the smoke would come out of this early one. I have no idea. But this other one here, obviously, this is the, um, the, Run cam one, and what does it say? It's five to 17 volts. So this is a two cell to four cell system. And I say the later HS1177s, they're also the same. They're up to 17 volts. So ignore that. It might be 22 volts, don't know. Um, here we go. It's an interesting camera. It's the same size, basically the same size as the HS1177. I'll put them side by side so you can see. There's not a lot of difference in terms of size there from any, any direction. See that? It all looks pretty much the same. So I guess it boils down to two things, mounting hardware and performance. So looking at the mounting hardware, this is, excuse my phone, this is the HS1177. It has this puny little aluminum bracket, which bend, inevitably bends on a mini quad if you have this camera where it's exposed to any kind of impact, just bends out of shape. And also the screws here just screw into plastic on the side of the case. So you can strip those out and sometimes they're hard to screw right in. So then the camera becomes a bit wobbly. It's all a bit how you go. And most of my installations of this camera, I have made my own aluminium brackets up to provide much greater strength and better position holding. Um, the 1177 has a single connector on the back for all the OSD and the voltage inputs. The run cam has two connectors. You can see that, oops, just about threw it on the floor. It has two connectors. There is a small one. Wait for the camera to focus. Come on, you can do it. There you go. It's got a small one to the left, which does the OSD stuff. And it has the other one to the right, which just does the video stuff. That's really cool. And I'll show you why that's cool in a moment. Now, this back plate, as you can see, it's also got other mounting holes. It's got um, these brass inserts here, which means that they won't strip out very easily. Still has the little titty on here for the same kind of bracket as the HS1177. But it comes with different mounting hardware. This is the bracket for this camera. So you can see you've got a pivot hole and then you've got an adjustment hole. So the, the screw that runs in there, you can tighten it. Set the angle, tighten it up, and it should stay on that angle. But, and this is a really big but, and it's a bit disappointing on the part of Runcam. Look at this bracket. It's even narrower than the one on the HS77. The, one, the 177, 1177 bracket is wider than this one. So this is just, just going to bend and fail and fracture here. It's just way too thin in my experience of using these cameras. So this is great. It lets you set the angle and then lock it in place, but it's just going to bend. It's, this, this aluminium is so weak. It will bend and that will be an end to the bracket. So uh, and when I saw that, I thought, oh, that's terrible. But, but I noticed that it also comes with hanger hardware. And that's not hardware designed for hangers. It's these little loop things here that go around the camera barrel. And then another little piece here that hangs from the up top plate on a mini quad. And so you've seen it on my DL180 uses this. So basically you put the camera barrel through there. This goes in here. Excuse me while I try and get this lined up. There you go. And then this hangs down from the top of the model. It means you can adjust your angle. And yeah, it's a nice neat way to, to mount your camera. But, and again, much disappointment, Runcam. This, um, if I put this on the camera, I'll take the lens cap off to do that. Sorry, I'm doing it all macro, but it all looks so insipid if I do it without a little bit of magnification because these are quite small cameras. So there we go. That's how we'd normally have it. It's got the hanger hardware on there. Line it up straight. That looks fine. And then if I put the hanger piece itself there, you'll notice something. Um, obviously, there's a, we can tilt it down that far. That's as far as it goes down. When I tilt it up, that's as far as it will tilt up. It's not enough. The, the lens hits. The mounting hardware, so you're limited. The, the maximum angle of tilt is way too low for any serious mini quad racing. So, hmm, again, fail on the hardware. Um, that's not satisfactory for racing, really. You know, racing, you have it often up about this high, and that's just, it's not going to do that with this bracket. 
this bracket, you have to, you'll have to cut a piece off the edge of this bracket here. I mean, a simple thing. All I had to do is make this tongue a little bit longer so that this hung down further, and then you could have put whatever angle you wanted on it. But they didn't do that. I'm sorry. They needed to run this by some people before they actually made all this plastic up. But hey, that could be an easy fix if they give us another one of these brackets with a longer tongue. We'll all be happy. So, run cam, if you're watching, maybe you want to do that. Just make a new version of this so that we can get more tilt out of our cameras because I actually prefer the hanging method it's a really great way to mount on a mini quad anyway to mount your hardware right now let's get back to that plug on the back you recall I mentioned that there were two plugs there and as you can see there are two separate plugs uh, on the back of this thing that's because we have our video connector plug here I'll just bring this over there's the video connector lead and that will plug nicely into the right hand one of those plugs there that's fine in fact I'll do that now I'll do it off screen because I'm old and I can't see what I'm doing if unless I have it really close to my eyes hang on there we go, so I've plugged that in there, that's fine, there you go, there's your power and your video, easy to spot. The other connector there is obviously left open, so we can then plug in the OSD controller, and it's got a little, like some of them do, they've got a little joystick here, do, 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 pushes down, left, right, up and down, and it has that little two pin connector there that will plug in beside the video lead to do your setting up of your parameters. Now that is really, really good, because on the earlier versions, like the HS1177 here, you've got to actually fart around and organize all sorts of things because if you want to plug your OSD in here you've got to unplug your video lead and that's if it's already installed it's a real pain in the backside this is a really good solution it's even better than the solution of the HS117M which I've reviewed which enables you to daisy chain your OSD controller to your video lead this way it's it's great it's a sensible idea it's wonderful I wish they all did it that way so big thumbs up to Runcam on the way they've implemented that but um, a little bit of a thumbs down in terms of the mounting hardware, never mind. So um, in terms of the leads, I'm going to pull out a bit now with the camera so it goes a bit blurry until I get far enough away. That looks good to me. Um, yeah, you get this lead here, which it doesn't have the usual servo plug on it. Now most of these camera connectors, they come with a, three, a servo connector, so you can just plug it, put your camera on a servo connector and plug it in there. But this has a two-way connector for the power and then the video lead is separate. So mm, I don't know. Um, it doesn't make much difference. I suppose you can still push these in as a single three pin connector. But the beauty, the thing I like about this lead is this is silicon insulation. It's not plastic. A lot of the video leads I've seen today have horrible plastic insulation which makes them stiff. They tend to break and it's really hard to solder them because the plastic burns back when you heat up the wire. This is brilliant. Silicon wire leads. Brilliant. Excellent. That's another huge bonus point for this camera. I really like the fact that using silicon wire is going to be resilient, tough. It's not going to break on me. They give you another lead, which is basically the same thing, but instead of having these servo type connectors on the end, it's got an RCA connector for your video and a barrel connector for your power. It's quite good if you want to set it up and test it with an LCD because most LCDs have the ability to handle an RCA connection and a barrel connection as well. It's usually something you have laying around. So there you go. That's great for setting up. Um, this is the plastic wire I talked about because you're not going to put it in your model this is horrible stiff plastic wire awful awful stuff this is lovely it's beautiful makes me want to sit in the corner and fondle it for a while it's so nice um, excellent notice also we get another back plate with this camera and that is because as I mentioned this back plate has the little brass inserts there so we can tighten the screw up really tight and it's more more reliable and resilient than just using plastic but if you want to go back to the same as the HS177, you don't want this stuff on the back, they give you another back plate which doesn't have the threaded brass insert. So you can put this back plate like so. As you can see, it doesn't have that stuff on it. So you can dispense with that if weight's an issue or it's just going to be in the way. That's a nice touch. I like that too. So there you go. That's really what you get. And it's also a packet of screws. Um, that's what you get. And so this camera, the real test is going to be when I strap this camera and the HS117 to the wings of my AXN, one on each wing, with two video transmitters, identical video transmitters, coming down to two DVRs, and I'll, do, I'll set the settings identically, and we'll go out and fly it when the rain stops, and that'll give us a really good indication as to how it compares performance-wise with the industry standard HS1177. In theory, it should be identical because they're using the same sensor, they're using the same Sony processing chips on board, it should be identical, but as we all know, Sometimes things don't work out as they should. So we'll get, because I mean, we don't know about the lens. One thing I noticed, I think these cameras, the Runcam Swift, I don't think it has an IR blocked lens by default. I think it allows infrared through, which is great for if you're flying at low light levels, like in the, in the evening. But in the, in the daytime, the colors always look a bit odd. They get a bit pink and a bit purplish because the infrared light interferes with the true color. 
you can probably f buy a color blocked lens, uh, sorry, an infrared blocked lens for this. I don't know, I'll check. It seems to be the standard 12 millimeter lens fitting, so you could pick up a, another lens. Also, this is a 2.8 millimeter lens, so you could pick up a 2.1 or a 3.6 or whatever you want to go in there if you want, prefer a different field of view. So that's it. This is the on the bench section of the review of the Runcam Swift, and I'll put the specifications here so you can. Pause, hopefully if you're watching in HD you can read that. So if you want to see what the specs are, you can pause the video and have a close look at that. Otherwise, it'll be on their website somewhere, the Runcam website. There'll be a link in the description of this video to the Runcam website. Uh, if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I will now wait for the rain to stop and then I can do part two of this video so we can see how the damn thing works. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.